Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. Watch while I turn all of this into this. We're going to be painting some seashells tonight. Should be a lot of fun. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man on chat, so uh, stick around and let's get started. Alrighty, I am going to be um, painting on a 12 by 12 inch canvas today. You can use whatever size you'd like. And just to start with, I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna on my brush. And while I do, I can talk about the paint colors here. I've got burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, magenta, um, pyrrole orange, Indian yellow hue. Uh, this one is yellow oxide, cadmium yellow light. Uh, cobalt teal, phthalo blue, green shade, ultramarine blue, light ultramarine, which is just ultramarine blue plus white. It's pre-mixed. Um, burnt, nope, unbleached titanium, <laughs> titanium white, and glass glazing liquid. All right, I'm going to use this burnt sienna here, maybe a little bit of magenta with it. And I'm just going to paint on my um, seashells here. And the main one here is our starfish, so that will help us kind of orient to the others. It's the first one that I painted and I did it so that I have a little bit of room in this upper corner for this seashell to go. And then I made his little arms come down. This is gonna be very loose interpretation of this. So I think it'll be fairly easy for beginners tonight. I'm trying to keep it a li little bit easier and we're gonna be using kind of a juicier brush stroke. So I'm using a flat um, number two Aspen right now. Um, I have all the brushes and paints listed down in the description if you're interested in, in um, figuring that out. And um, Blick is having a sale right now on canvases. So if you click that Blick link, you can see their canvases are on sale. And also the brush guys, uh, he informed me that his, we did a brush um, tutorial a couple of weeks ago. Well, probably last month, I guess, a um, few months, a few weeks ago, and um, some point, I don't know when. Anyhow, um, it he said that they're back in stock, so we ran out of our beginner list uh, when we were um, doing the show, yeah, so they are back in stock, so we've got our beginner and intermediate list, and the intermediate um, list has some of these brushes that I'm going to be using tonight, these Aspen ones in it. Um, but you can see on their website, the Brush Guys link is down in the description. And be sure to use the code Angela Fine Art to get 5% off. So, And it also lets them know that you found them through us. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to that guy. And then let, this guy is going to be kind of a flat bottom here. It's kind of a squared off bottom. And then you do this V shape right here. And then it sort of fans out from there and up and around. So like that. That spiral was kind of a little bit interesting. So it kind of comes up like this. You do that outline, but then the actual spiral sort of comes up here, but it also comes and cuts around right here. It's kind of interesting. So um, there's sort of two entry points here and here, and they sort of meet up right in there somewhere. All right, and then this one is really easy. It's just gonna be a straight line. And this is rounded out and then it kind of cuts in right there. So this part is darker and then the spirals go uh, in this direction here all along it. Kind of at an angle down. And then I decided not to overlap them. They're overlapped in the um, photo, but the photo was, didn't have as much room. I decided to do it on a square canvas so I had a little bit more room and could move them around and they wouldn't overlap. Okay, and then this one's going to be the trickiest ones to draw probably. So you're going to start with that tail and which is kind of a straight line like that, a little curved at the tip. And then you're going to do a angle here and an angle up here like that. And then straight this way and then a point like that. And the point should kind of line up. If you did a straight line through the middle there, the point should kind of line up with the end. And then just kind of round it off 
And it comes up like that. And this one also kind of flattens out. And this part is a little bit farther back than this part. So this straight line and this one kind of, if you kind of make a box like that, that's sort of the angle. But then it cuts off right here. So that's all red inside right there. And then it, the spirals go this way. And then there's a little bit of a lip right here where it opens up from the inside. Okay, so there's our drawings. Um, I can go ahead and do some of the lines on this guy. They're just gonna radiate down, point straight down into the shell there. So there we go, we're done. No, <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Welcome if you're new to our channel. I. Uh, do these tutorials on Tuesday nights and they're always live because I don't like to edit so that's that's the only reason I'm lazy so <laughs> no not really <laughs> kind of a little bit really we're lazy what we're lazy we're lazy yeah and Mark helps me and we just chat about life and stuff and paint so that's it and you get to see the whole process from start to finish this way. And then we also have the shorts and the time lapse in case you don't want to sit through us talking about our pets. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you're going to paint along, I would watch the whole thing live, the whole live stream and take notes. And then um, you can come back in and paint it at your leisure and you'll have your notes there and you can stop and start as you go. So that's the easiest way I've found to tell people to do it. All right, so I've mixed in some cobalt teal and some uh, unbleached titanium. If you don't have that, just use titanium white, add a little bit of like a yellow oxide or, or kind of a brownish color to mute it. And we're gonna just dab in this nice teal color in our background. We're gonna put colors on top of this, but this is gonna be kind of our base. I wanted the sand to be colored. You know, we're taking some artistic liberties here. So this is our painting. We can do what we want. Right? <laughs> is your artistic justice? What? Is your artistic justice? I don't know. Why? Uh, just liberty and justice oh. for all. <laughs> probably. Probably. There's art, please. So there you there's go. probably some form of... <laughs> There'll be justice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, using that cobalt teal, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. It'll make it a little bit more green. I could use thalo blue, too, if I wanted to more, even more green. I didn't use a, a green, though. I figured we could just mix our own. There's really no green in the reference anyways, so um, this will do. Get some burnt sienna here. I think I want some warmer tones in the sand here. There we go. That'll be nice. And I'm just using an eight flat for this part. So just kind of a large flat brush, just something that you can work quickly and get around these little areas. And I find that you want to use a brush that is big enough to easily get fit into the um, tightest areas of your, you know, that you're painting, but also big enough to cover pretty easily a large area so you know you want to use the biggest brush that you can fit into easily into the area that you're painting all right get some of that blue and dab that in and if you kind of just dab this on top while it's wet they'll kind of blend don't over blend it and mix and mix and mix because then you're just going to make mud or you're, you won't have a you know these kind of interesting overlaps just end up with a lot of overworked it'll all kind of be the same color is what I'm saying so if you just as you're working just pick up a little bit of color put it down and then while that's wet and put it down quickly while that's wet you can grab a new color um, or wipe it off if you've got too much paint on your brush wipe it off but I don't have a ton of paint here so I've kind of wiped most of it onto the canvas and then I'm gonna grab my teal and unbleached titanium here and just dab that into, you can see how it's gonna pick up a little bit of that burnt sienna, but I'm not really going over the top of it a lot. I'm just kind of trying to go right up to it and overlap it just a little bit. But it'll pick up the color um, as you work, so you don't wanna 
you know, blend too much unless you want it to blend. But for this, we're just kind of dabbing, not the dance, but the, <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. First dad joke of the day. No. <laughs> come for the art, stay for the dad jokes, right? <laughs> How come I get the stink eye when I do a dad joke? You know, they're just over there just riffing. <laughs> That's not cake. really a dad joke. I don't think it okay. qualifies quite, but right. that's my version of a dad joke. It's <laughs> <laughs> about as close as I get. All right, I think I'm going to make it like a warmer, um, more of a salmon color almost. I'm going to add a little bit of the magenta here with my burnt sienna. I had a little bit of yellow there too. So let's use some of that in some places. You just don't want to use two colors that are going to, well, I mean, honestly, this is brown background, so it's sand. You can you can make mud if you want to. It's going to look fine, but, um, and really a neutral color would look fine back here too. So just do whatever you want with this color. But if you want a, it to be, you know, a little bit more um, colorful or use a different color um, you just want to make sure that your two colors that you're using are going to blend well together so like a the the um, an orange with a blue or an orange with a green you know if I had a really big green then it would definitely make a brown um, when they mix together so just kind of keep that in mind um, I'm not going too orange here I'm trying to keep it a little bit more like on the magenta Side, similar to what we did around the seashells and I'm not there's really no rhyme or reason here I'm not really um, being super careful about this I'm just getting some paint down on because we're going to be putting other coats on top and doing other things to the sand but this is just getting some color behind and if you want to you could paint all of the sand with a color first so I thought maybe like a warm orange would be pretty or something like that, and then you, you know, you could put this layer on top, and it would um, kind of glow around the edges where it shows through, kind of thing. But that's up to you, whatever you want to do with yours. Right, that looks pretty good so far, so good. Get a little bit of cobalt teal here. I'm just gonna dab on some in a few areas now one thing that you need to watch for is like this area that I already just painted is starting to dry that was the first area that we did so we don't want to mess with that paint or add more layers to it while it's drying so we just have to keep working around the outside let these layers these first layers dry first and then we can add layer um, more paint onto them after the fact later but right now we just need to let it, leave them be. So, and looks good. Yeah, see, so even like down here, what, where we did a little bit ago, it's starting to dry. I can feel it's getting a little bit sticky, and paint gets sticky as it dries. So, just have to know that, and it doesn't have to look good right now. It'll probably take a few layers before it starts to kind of look like anything we want it to look like. But I call this the ugly stage. We kind of have to make it ugly before we make it pretty. So um, I like teenagers. It's a little bit awkward, but in the end, you know, things work out. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to trust the process. It's a little painful. And, a little awkward. <laughs> and husbands, too. Huh? And husbands, too. And husbands, too. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to leave that alone. Okay, so there we go. We've got a kind of an interesting background started there. I'm going to clean that out in my water. And I didn't mention, but you do want to have water with the acrylics. And I am wetting my brushes down before I use them. I did not mention that, but... I always wanted to have a little bit of water in here. I'm using heavy body acrylics, so the water helps keep the paints flowing. They are thicker than normal paints. These um, these brushes that I'm using are a faux hog bristle, so they're a little bit firmer than other brushes, and they'll push the paint around, these thicker paint around a little bit easier. All right, so let's grab my white 
And I'm going to go ahead and start on straight into my sunflower, or uh, my sunflower, my starfish here. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of ultramarine blue. I have that light ultramarine there, but I want a little bit deeper blue, I think. So I'm not going to grab that one yet. I might use a little bit of the thalo blue too. Okay. So I think I'm going to use the blue as kind of an under layer. And I'm going to leave a little bit of that outline that I did before showing and I want it to be kind of sketchy so I'm going to use I switched to a four filbert and I'm going to use kind of just the tip of the brush to sort of drag and draw and keep it sketchy and this is why I was saying that I think that this would be a good um, pro, um, project for a beginner because I'm not trying to be too careful with my brush strokes it's not going to be too intimidating where you have to be super careful or anything. Um, just get in there and throw, slap some paint down, have some fun. It's a really, really fun project and I love painting in this style when I work with beginners because I think it's one of the most um, exciting for somebody who's new to painting. Um, it's faster and it feels um, like you're kind of, I don't know, jumping in with both feet, you know. You get to express yourself through some brush strokes and your own personality comes out a little bit. And don't try to make it look like mine, just kind of do your own version of it. Have fun with it. That's the main thing. And kind of Okay, so it kind of rounds out a little bit on some of these, and some of them it's a little bit more squared off. Probably made this one a little bit wide. So what I can do is go back in with my background color and just kind of push that back a little bit right there where I want it to be a little bit thinner right there, and maybe right there too. If you use the same color kind of in the same area and then I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm just going to kind of push that around and I've also got some of my background colors left here when I mixed them I left a little extra so that I could come back in and do this and I can push that paint around a little bit and just kind of make it look like I meant to do that and that was there the whole time you know it's not that hard to Kind of adjust. I'm gonna go a little bit darker right here. I feel like it needs a little bit darker right underneath him. There's a little shadow. Again, wipe that off, get a little bit of that green that's sort of around it, and just kind of fuzz out that edge just a little bit. Pull that paint down slightly. Nothing too stressful. Okay. And then this is still a little bit wet, so I think I can get away with doing my white on top. So I'm going to get a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of my blue. And I'm just going to very lightly run it over the top. I don't want it to blend too much. I just want it to kind of highlight a little bit of texture. So I'm barely touching and I'm kind of almost laying my brush down flat so that it's going to have some texture to it. See? And I've got a fairly good amount of paint on my brush, but the the touch is thin, so or the touch is very light, so it's not going to deposit a lot of paint on the canvas. Just barely touching and if your blue is a little tacky, you can wait for it to dry and then do this layer. So I'm not trying to blend with my blue. So my blue can be totally dry. It'll still do the same effect. Um, and, you know, if it is tacky, you don't want to do this because it could lift the blue off the canvas. It'll stick to your brush. Okay. So 
just kind of doing some little expressive brush strokes and letting a little texture happen. Okay, I think that's good. We'll let that dry and then we'll come back to it and do some more. So let's work on this guy up here. Oh, in my picture, he's kind of teal. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the teal and I'm gonna get some of this blue that's in the sunflower or the, I keep calling it a sunflower, in <laughs> the sea. What is it? Starfish, not a seahorse either. My goodness, I'm gonna use some of that. Oh, it's gonna be one of those nights. All right, I swear I haven't been drinking that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh goodness, okay. So I'm gonna use that cobalt teal. I'm gonna pull in towards the middle there, leaving my lines around, but sort of pulling around in my white areas. And leaving just a little bit of that brown showing. Just trying to fill in all of the open spaces in my in my shell and it's okay if a little bit of that brown shows through it doesn't have to be perfectly opaque over the top of the original layer there okay so let's get some burnt sienna and some of that pyrrole orange maybe a little bit of the magenta gonna make like a burnt orange color. I'm gonna use that here and I'm trying to do this while that blue's wet. If it if it dries that's fine too but you kind of try to put in this is very similar to the original sketch color too or the you know the original color that I did for the outline. Kind of just pulling in, making a little little bit of texture. It actually goes this direction. Kind of angles back that way. And then it meets up with that right there and becomes kind of a thinner, almost a straight line. Just dabbing. And then I'm gonna get that burnt umber and do that very center of it with a darker color and use the tip of my brush just kind of draw in a few little sketchy lines to indicate the and I think with this the less is more so one, I don't want to be overly um, perfect with it I want it to have a little bit of sketchy feeling burnt umber I mean and some white and a little bit of my maybe a little bit of the ultramarine blue make kind of a gray get that first layer on we'll we'll come back and add more I'm going to get a little bit of that bright ultramarine blue maybe a little bit of burnt umber but I want it to be pretty blue here the burnt umber will just help me get darker I'm going to do the opening of the shell that's right here And then maybe use a little bit of this color in that center part and using the corner of the brush just sort of do a few lines here and there not not all the way around just just a few lines to sort of indicate where the 
spirals are. Okay. Very, very light touches. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to use this color on my sea, um, starfish, seahorse, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to call call it. <laughs> it is forever. He's, He's having an identity now. crisis, obviously. <laughs> need to add that to the tag though. What? Sea sunflower. So if somebody's searching for it, they can find it. Sea side flower? Sea sunflower. Oh, <laughs> sea sun, okay. Didn't hear what you were saying there, obviously. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Just putting that shadow down on the sand around him. Thinking about where the sun would be hitting the sand and maybe where the shadow would be around him. Let's go ahead and kind of put a little shadow on the sand over here on him too. My background is mostly dry now, so I'll be able to kind of push that paint around. Okay, and then um, we will get a little bit of, let's get a little bit of yellow and some white, maybe a little bit of my unbleached titanium, so it's kind of a, just a light off-white, yellowy off-white color, creamy color, and I'm going to use that to dry brush and dab on some little shell highlights on my shell. So just kind of trying to think about where the light's hitting it. It's still a little bit wet underneath, so need to be careful that that paint's not sticky. And I'm trying to keep in mind where the spiral is and Make sure that these lines are kind of going out, you know, following the, the line of the shell. pipe part might be right here where it's raised up the most so maybe I'll do a little bit of white right there where it's coming around raised up okay that looks good enough I think and I can do a little bit of white along this lip too that'll help make that look that opening look a little bit raised and I don't have a the rev, the reference photo in the original so it's kind of forcing me to just kind of guess and be a little bit more expressive so if you want to have the you know reference photo I'll be posting it on my website if you want to show that website I'll have both reference photos on my website there and you can Decide if you like the this one. the photo. Yep, there we go. That's the link. <clears throat> Decide if you like the the um, colorized version better than the original photo. But all right, that looks good. So let's go ahead and go to this one down here. So this one, actually, let's go. Let's do this one. Um, I did a little bit of dark blue under there where the it's laying on the sand. Let's do this one here. Uh, no, it's fine. I just moved it over. Um, okay, so I'm going to get magenta and I'm going to make a purple for this one. So I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and magenta. That'll make the brightest purple that we can make with our palette. And it's got a lot of the... Um, magenta in it. If I wanted a little bit more blue, I can add a little bit more blue. 
so it's more of a blue violet and I think I had a little bit maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna in here too but we'll just I'm going to use this to kind of start this shell there's these little flat parts that are raised up Just leave in the white in between here. teal and the unbleached titanium or the um, light ultramarine blue maybe with a little bit of white that under here sorry that was the Fitz Pickles tail hitting the stealth dog well, yeah he's so stealthy he he's heard something he's the on the job he's on the job he's in the door in the door jam with yeah. his tail <laughs> that's, that's got to hurt it's got to right. I don't know I mean, you must not have any feeling in his tail anymore because he just hits it all the time on everything. It like it doesn't even register. <sighs> Cobalt tail here. I'm just going to go in between with this color. And I don't want that dark purple to come all the way down because this part's going to be a little bit um, more um, orangey color. So I'm just kind of doing. This is the base, and I kind of stopped the purple about halfway down the, sh the shell. I'm just kind of blending in this color to what I've got. I need to bring the purple out past this, so this is like closer to, um, closer in, and then the purple goes out past this. So I need to bring this purple up a little bit in a couple of places right here. Okay. And if you're not into drawing and you think this is too hard to draw, I have a traceable um, also on my website. Um, or you can go to Patreon and sign up there and then go to my website to find it. Um, but I would, our new website is up and it makes finding resources like traceables and um, bonus videos and things like that really, really easy. So um, if you are a patron um, already, be sure that you've checked out our website. I know I've posted a lot about it, but it, it really is the best, easiest way of finding things. And... It's two, two thumbs up, says school and neighbor. Taken a long time to get it there, but it is really amazing. And we've got other things that we're going to be doing with it, but, you know, blog and different things and still getting our newsletter worked out. But um, as far as finding stuff, it's working. So, and playing videos and traceables and all that kind of thing is all working. So, I've got a little bit of pink hair. And so I'm going to start to kind of dab on some pink in kind of a pattern. I don't like it. It's kind of making a weird pattern there. So I might make switch brushes here. So it's kind of leaving me weird marks. I want more straight lines, I think. we got enough weird marks around here. Only you're the only weird mark that that's, we have. That's the only one that's allowed. No. <laughs> like this. You can see that's the kind of the shape. And then down from that. This brush is making this kind of horseshoe shape or like a little U shape that I don't know if I like or not. But we'll keep it for now. 
hope it's skipping around still. I just saw it skip. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do the nuclear option next week. Huh? We'll do the nuclear option that we Delete talked about. the whole program and yeah. start over. Yeah. We've got a program that we use for our live streams, and it's starting to... It did an update and started to mess up. Like, it was fine before the update, so we know something happened somewhere. I'm going to go back to this flat brush because I think I can get better marks with it. So I'm going to use the unbleached titanium... And I'm going to get the Indian yellow hue now. That's going to be a brighter orangey yellow. And I'm going to use some of that in here. So people love your website so much that they're adding it to their bookmarks. Oh, wow. Nice. Tabs, so, yeah. Nice. That's good to know. <clears throat> I, I, it's great. It's got every single video we've ever done that is for public and for patrons. So everything over, I think there's uh, uh, around 900 videos on there, um, about 700, almost 800 paintings, something like that, and the reason that there's, you know, 900 videos and 800 paintings or whatever is because, or there's probably, I don't know, anyhow, <laughs> the reason is because some of the paintings um, I do in multiple videos. So the Patreon ones that are taking me 10 hours, I'm not sitting down and doing them all in one, <laughs> in one setting. Well, so. all I can say is that, you know, I thought I realized how dedicated your followers are because they, you know, still followed you after watching some of those early videos of yeah. <laughs> thing, but even more so now what they endured with the janky websites oh, and yeah. the services that we were using before. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now it's, it's hopefully... It's working. Yep. It's, they're, so. They were very, very loyal, and we had mm -hmm. some technical difficulties there in July, and they <laughs> stuck with us for a while while my Patreon videos were being moved, and it was a whole process. Very stressful for me. And for other people, too, I'm sure. That was cobalt teal and white. And now I'm just going to get cobalt teal itself. So and you in the future, some. you'll never know their pain, but... Mm -mm. It was good. It's good now. It's all good. Yeah, new folks are just going to be like, what? This is so mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's right there. This is... Several thousand dollars and if, uh, and several years of work to get it going. It's a labor of love for sure, and it's an investment in our um, in our people, our followers. They've supported us and made it possible. Yes, yeah. I've wanted my brother that. to. My brother Josh is the one that actually built it. He's built websites for. New York State and other major companies and different, you know, governments and things. And he is a master at what he does. And I never could afford to, do, to use him. He was always like, I'll make you a website. And I was like, ah, I didn't want to do that to him. I knew what it was going to take. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to do that to you, Josh. No, especially not for free because it took months of work. <laughs> So he was a good sport. He's put up with a lot. <laughs> so what are you mixing over there? I've got um, magenta and white. Okay. I'm just putting all the colors in this one. And, and kind of just... You may have al dabs, alluded to this earlier. Uh, so this is... I'm guessing that this went through some kind of a filter. Yes. Or something. Do you recommend any uh, particular ones? Any filter apps on the iOS devices? On iOS, um, whew, I do not remember. I want to say, hmm, well, Prisma is one that I've used before. This is not Prisma. I want to say this one was. Um, Oh, I can't remember. That. I honestly don't. I'd have to get my to iPad and look at it. I don't remember 
uh, which one I use. I do, I, I kind of flop around between ones and what I'll do is I'll take an image and kind of have an idea of what I want and then I'll just try it on multiple different ones until I find one that does what I want it to do, you know, because some of them are good for certain images and some of them just don't have a good filter for, you know, other ones. So I'm really, I pretty much just try them all, you are, know. Are any of them paid? Um, no, the, no, none, none of the ones that I use are paid. So no. you can download different ones and try them out if you don't right. install them. And there's that no looks, cost. that's a little too party at, um, I don't know. I, I don't like know. It. It's, it's looking a little bit party, party town right now. Um, party t- <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to use these colors that were over in this one a little bit. I don't know. I was just having fun here, but. It needs to be grounded a little bit, so I'm going to get a little bit of burnt sienna and some of my magenta and use some of that to kind of help to desaturate some of these colors a little bit. Okay, so that looks better now. Yeah, so you need the neutrals. You need those neutrals to kind of ground these colors, because otherwise you just have a bunch of pastel stuff, and it looks a little too, I don't know, like nursery, you know, colors. So that's what was happening there. We didn't have any grounded colors, and everything was everything was bright. But if you want to do that, you can do that with yours up to you. All right, so I'm going to get some white now. Just use white, and it's got other colors in there. It's kind of dirty, so it's going to have other colors. I might pick a little bit of that green, I feel like. Maybe a tiny touch of green. And I'm going to find these bright areas here that I want on the... I'm just set my brush down and making marks here. Try not to get too fussy with my brush strokes and quick little brush strokes and just let them be what they are. You know, don't over blend and don't get caught in working and reworking an area on here. It's pretty easy to get like tunnel vision on here when you're doing something like this and like decide that this has to look a certain way and then you'll end up messing with it for hours, you know. And so just kind of do it as close to what you think it should look like and then kind of step away from it and look at it from a distance because sometimes that's what I'm doing here. I'm looking at it in the in the uh, monitor and looking to see what I've done and see if there's anything I want to change. I'm going to get some of that green and just kind of outline and push this line up here a little bit. And there's some lines that are running down. So I'm going to get some of the ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of the light ultramarine and a tiny touch of the magenta. So I want kind of a darkish color, but not not super dark. And I'm gonna use my line and just kinda come down here and this will kind of make them all kind of come together. Go from that dark purple and down into that center area. Okay, that that's pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna do much more than that. I. You can, that's, this one's got a lot of detail in it, so, um, but I think, I think we got it close to what we want it to be. I think maybe I'm going to get a little bit of this magenta and do a little bit of magenta in my dark areas, just across. There we go. All right. Looks good. And then I'm going to use some of this magenta on this one and the, the purple 
and what that'll do is kind of tie everything together. So I always like to use colors in multiple places and that kind of ties now these two are tied together. I used the brown from here in this one and I used the teal and and now the purple in this one. And I might even put a little bit of it on my um, starfish seahorse sunflower. <laughs> sea sunflower. <laughs> sea sunflower, exactly. Okay. <laughs> that is right up there with armholes. What? That's right up there with armholes. Exactly. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to get my orange and my magenta and make kind of a reddish color. I'm going to use that in the opening of the seashell. And anytime you're using a new color, you may want to add just a touch of it other places. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of it on my seashell up here. Again, and maybe a little bit of it over here just so that it's not the only place on my canvas that I'm using it. Then I'm going to use a little bit more of the orange and maybe a little tiny bit of white. Maybe some Indian yellow hue. I'm going to kind of do the lightish orange on the inside here so it looks like it's kind of glowing a little bit. and out to the tail right there. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to get some of this pink here that we have and use that. That was on this one again, kind of pulling colors from other places and putting them on here. And I'm going to go ahead and use this on this shell. Just putting some of this reddish color there, getting some of that orangey red, and we're going to go underneath this one. And you notice I'm kind of holding my brush farther back too. This will help me kind of be a little bit looser with my brush strokes and not so um, fussy. If you are more of a perfectionist painter and you like to get really tight in here and do all your brush strokes like this, try try moving back a little bit for this style and see if that helps you loosen up your brush strokes a little bit. Also using a little bit bigger brush will help you loosen up your brush strokes. It kind of forces you to do looser brush strokes because you can't um, you can't be as precise when you're using a bigger brush. Getting some magenta and white again. I'm going to use some of that in here. Maybe a little bit on the lip and top there where it opens up, comes down. And then right under there, I'm going to wipe this off. Right under here, there is a really dark shadow. So I'm going to get some of that. I don't have any of this purple left, but I'm going to kind of make up some of it. A dark purple with the ultramarine blue and magenta and a little bit of burnt um, burnt umber. I'm going to put it right there. Just there. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put it on my sand underneath my shell too. And I need to do the sand around this guy too the same way. I don't want it to look outlined too much, so don't overdo that line like don't you know put it in too thick and I'll go ahead and put it on this one too like blend it out a little bit into the sand slightly so that it looks like it's a shadow and not just an outline if that makes sense kind of just pushing the paint around just a little bit pulling it down in some places there we go use my finger to kind of wipe it off too if I get it too thick. Looks good. Okay. Alright. 
together pretty quick, huh? I really like this style. It's a fun way to paint. Uh, I'm going to get some ultramarine blue here. I don't know what I did here. I kind of touched that edge weird. So I'm going to kind of clean up that edge a little bit and kind of round off the ends of the sun starfish legs. I don't know why I keep saying sunfish. Sunflower. <laughs> Sometimes my brain, my brain must have saved starfish and sunflower right next to each other and they just like, it's just like picking the wrong file out of my memory <laughs> when I try to say it. Like, all right, getting some teal. I'm going to use that right here. some white with it. If your brush is getting dirty, you can clean it out at this point. Mine's kind of getting a little soupy. Cobalt teal and some white. I had some over here, but it dried, so just mixing some more up. If you don't have cobalt teal, you can use like thalo blue and a little bit of yellow. It'll make a cobalt or a teal color, and then you can add white to it to get kind of the turquoisey color. I should have mentioned that earlier. Sorry. <sighs> don't go out and buy it if you don't have it. It's fine. Just use what you've got that's close. You can make turquoise pretty easily with blue and white or in blue and yellow. I mean. Okay, pretty. I like it. I'm going to use a little of this turquoise on this starfish too. I noticed that there's some turquoisey parts on the, the reference that I kind of missed. There we go. I feel like I think I'm going to go a little bit darker with my turquoise. So here's the thalo blue. And a little trick that I like is thalo blue and burnt sienna. Seems like a weird combo, but it makes a beautiful teal color. Let's see that. Really pretty. So we're going to use that on that arm right there. It had a little bit of white to it. So I want it just a little bit darker than what we had. Now that I'm seeing the other things painted, I'm realizing that that starfish was a little bit little bit light overall and I'm getting my white and putting that back over to create that shape there that I want. There we go. I like him being kind of... What is he doing? Is he fixing his bed up over there? So yeah, he's fluffing his bed behind you there. His bed. The dog, sorry. That's the joy of working with pets. <laughs> yeah, you get what you get when it's live. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's the pets, air conditioners, sometimes yep. <laughs> people working outside. Thankfully, they're not working on our neighbor, on our yard today. Yeah, frogs. The frog's not back. Mm -hmm. He moved on. He took a ride on my son's car. <laughs> It was Spencer. I got about halfway to work, which is about 30 minutes from here. And uh, so this frog just kind of popped up on his windshield on low, down low. And he said he just made his way up and over. And he found him on the back of his car after he got to his destination. So he, he got transplanted to uh, a <laughs> totally different city. <laughs> Funny. Hopefully he's doing okay in his new home. <laughs> sure he. <laughs> Hopefully there's lots of good bugs out there. <laughs> Not sure why he was on his car, but. <laughs> All right, there we go. And then I want him to be kind of that yellowish color. So I'm gonna get the 
Indian yellow hue and some cadmium or um, some yellow oxide and Indian yellow hue. The yellow oxide's trans or uh, opaque, and the Indian yellow hue is uh, is transparent. So you have to add an opaque color to it to get it to cover over other colors, although we're going over white, so it shouldn't be too bad, but it, we are going to go over a little bit of the red here with it. And you can see it's still not quite covering in some places, so I'm going to add a little bit of the unbleached titanium to it just to make it a little bit more um, opaque. And just add that on. Again, we're not being real fussy about this. We're just trying to kind of be expressive with our brush strokes and let, let our creativity come out with this. I saw something not like this, but there was just like a single um, shell uh, and it had, you know, just a really interesting um, expressive brush strokes, very like juicy brush strokes um, from like Pottery Barn, you know, and so this is very kind of trendy beach art shells in general are kind of trendy right now and so I thought we'd try to I don't know it's fun end of summer you know gotta do the seascape last week and this week we're doing some shells yeah since we are landlocked here we're taking the beach to us. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing the beach to ourselves, to Arkansas. Okay, a little bit of touches of lighter color. There's a lighter highlight right above that dark, right there, all the way down. I am getting a lot of a lot of glitching on here. Every time I look up, it glitches. color, purpley, purple color. Down here, little tiny touches. Not, don't need a lot of it. And then we get just magenta and kind of do my stripes that are through that part of the shell. Right there. And a little bit of the orange and some yellow. And my unbleached titanium, so I have like a light, maybe get a little bit of this light yellow, cadmium yellow light. I need to clean out my brush though, I've got purple in there still, so I need to get clean. Try that again. My orange and yellows. Make a light. Light yellow, add some white to it. I've already got some light yellow, so this is just gonna deepen that color and actually kinda need to go a little darker, actually, more than light. I think I need some darker yellow. More of a mustardy color. Maybe just a... Little bit of the pyrrole orange with my yellow oxide. There we go. That's closer to what I need. Right there. 
and then I want to so I'm kind of doing the darker shades toward the bottom so lighter shades up up here at the top lighter colors at the top hues if you want to be exact maybe add some of this color in my shell over there maybe let's add a little bit of it in here Again, mixing the colors up, making sure that they're not just all in one spot. And getting a little bit of that red color that we started with and kind of covered up all the red that was down here. So I want to add a little bit of that back in. And I think we're good. Okay, let's move on to this next one and we'll be done. So this one's got a lot of fun colors. So I'm going to kind of use this orangey tone do some stripies with that and this one is going to tie in all of our colors together it's going to have all the colors that we've used so I'm going to use some blue cobalt blue here we already did a little bit of the red when we, when we did this part of that one I'm going to use a little bit of this blue in here too And then we want the ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of light ultramarine with it. Come toward the top there. And then I'm just going to kind of use the corner of my brush and sort of drag through. I don't want it to mix too much with what's already down, so because it's I've got oranges and things it's gonna mix some muddy colors if I do get it too oops Ooh, almost got myself mm -hmm. I'm gonna get use that blue down at the bottom here and kind of pull up I've got a little bit of an area down here that's just white so I'm just gonna kind of pull up I feel like my light has been coming from this side somewhat so this will kind of just shadow the bottom edge of that shell there and then let's use this light unbleached titanium with the blue that I've got in my brush and we'll pull in this direction and kind of get some striations I'm not over blending here I'm just kind of pulling through that wet paint to get those kind of marbled looking strokes and then let's get some of the yellow with the white yellow and white and just kind of find a spot and kind of do a long stripe down with that I'm trying to keep these all sort of in the same general direction side of that opening right here okay we're almost done Ooh. pretty happy with how this is all turning out very very much looser style than I normally do but I really like it I think pretty happy with how it's looking and let's we'll let that dry and because we've got well let me see I think I can maybe get when you get a lot of layers on sometimes it just gets kind of soupy and it doesn't want to lay down any more paint but we'll try to get a little magenta in there because I feel like I want a little magenta in some of these that's gonna let me still not too thick okay
And then let's do just plain white, and I don't have any left to put some out. Mm. What time are we? Oh, we're just at an hour. We're doing good. Wow, we've flown through this one. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can take another hour just to dilly dally. I know. Well, I am going to add some more brush strokes to the background, so uh, we're not done yet. Well, I'm going to do my highlights with this white kind of down this. Just off this one side, so not all the way to the edge, but just off the one side, doing some highlights there, and a little bit of highlight with some bright white right here. Okay, I feel like this one's getting a little bit overworked, so I'm gonna leave it alone for now and come back to it later once it's dry because it's it's just too soupy it's just kind of blending where I don't want it to blend I think I want to do one more layer of these stripies on that one alright and then on this I'm going to go a little bit brighter right in here Give it some highlights. Okay. Maybe a little bit brighter right in here. Like that part of the sunflower in the middle there might be the most raised up, so I might give it a little bit more light right there. I think I want a little bit of the yellow on him too. He doesn't have any of the yellow, so I think I'm just gonna dab on some yellow in a few places to kind of tie him in with some of the other things that'll help. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab this filbert again. This is the four filbert, and just figure out kind of what colors and things I want in my sand. So I probably want to have some of this darker color here like some of that purple tone but I, I don't want it that dark so I'm gonna get a little bit of white and mix that with that purpley tone I think it was the phthalo blue and magenta one of those I'm just gonna add that in a few places and think about maybe where my shadows might be um, maybe add the purple tones sort of you know like maybe there's some shadows getting thrown in between these and maybe a little bit in here and I'm just gonna make some expressive little wiggly brush strokes here and there nothing really too fussy I'm not trying to blend anything I'm just letting these brush strokes be visible and happen and be on top of what's already there so just kind of turning my brush in different ways and letting them kind of make some marks looks good all right let me get this light light um, unbleached titanium and this time I'm gonna kind of use the tip of my brush and just do some little um, scribbles with the tip of the brush I'm using a little bit lighter touch I kind of was pressing down a little bit more with those purple tones um, but this time I want to maybe be a little bit more careful and if you want to, you could do like splatters here. I think I might do some splatters too um, at the end, maybe. And um, that'll be a nice like sand-like effect. If we wanted to do realistic sand, I would probably kind of start with like a, a burnt umber color or something like that, and then do um, use a, a stippler to kind of dab on colors um, over the top rounds and things and then use my um, stippler or my um, splatter, you know, splatter color all over. I, I, I think I'm doing too much of this color. Maybe so I want to be a little bit more selective about it. I don't want to cover up all my dark 
There he is. But that looks, it's looking a little bit better. And the, the photo editing program that we used, we, I took the photo and then I color edited it. Color edited it. <laughs> I don't know if it's hard to say. Um, and uh, changed the colors. So it had these kind of swirlies and then I kind of made them a little bit more colorful. So, you know, you don't have to take the first, you know, take what you like about the, we like the background of this one, but I like the colors in a different one. So I kind of merged the two and tried to edit this so that I got the colors that I liked in the one that didn't have these swirlies in the background. I'm gonna get the kind of orangey color that we were using for some of these and I'm gonna put that back in here in a couple of spots. I think I wanted a little bit more orange. think that I think I need that like a burnt orange color I think that that's what I'm missing is this color here that's better maybe <laughs> you love what I love the background effect Mm, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's working. Mm-hmm. Working. I'm going to get some more of that. I didn't finish the color down here. So in areas where you've already got a lot of that lighter color, then just use kind of a darker color or something. So I already had a lot of that unbleached titanium in that area, so I don't really need to add it there. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit more of a, like an orangey tone in those areas around it. Okay, and then I think I'm going to use some teal and maybe a little bit darker tone, but I'm kind of thinning it out with maybe a little glaze. And I'm going to use that. The more transparent look, like having the glaze or water or whatever you want to use, um, a little bit more transparent will make it go on a little bit less harsh. You know, it will be. It'll be a little softer effect. And, and it's a way to do it without, you know, using white. You don't have to use white to cut the color. You can make it transparent instead. And in some places I'm gonna go with a little bit of the thicker color and darker color. Okay, that's better. And then let's go ahead and use some of this yellow here. I feel like we're kind of lose. We don't have a lot of yellow, so I want to use a little bit of that. Maybe. And then what we can also do is glaze, which I get questions about what is glazing all the time. All it is is just going over an area with a transparent layer of color. So just tints an area with color without, you know, having to cover the whole thing. It, it shows through the under colors and the details underneath so that um, 
you're just kind of adding a little bit of a change of color or tint, sometimes shadow, but in this case I think we'll just use it as a kind of a tint and it'll add a little depth to our color in places. So I think I might want to add a little, say, magenta. And you want to pick a color that's transparent. So magenta or quinacridone magenta, any of the quinacridones are transparent. My phthalos are all transparent. My ultramarine is transparent. So any of those will do good. So thalo green, thalo blue, thalo turquoise, ultramarine blue, and um, magenta. Also the Indian yellow hue is transparent, so all of those colors make great glazes. So I'm going to use the magenta, maybe a little bit of the Indian yellow hue. That'll make it a light, like, peachy red-ish color, which was kind of the original color that we started with. So, but I'm going to add a lot of glaze here, and I want to make sure my layering was um, dry. I'm just going to use this glaze in just a few places. It doesn't have to be everywhere, but I can use it on top of my items. So if I want to, like, you know, make my starfish a little bit pinker in, in an area, or maybe make this little area right here a little bit more pink, I can go in here with this glaze. It really makes a cool effect. It also kind of just makes your painting kind of feel a little bit more finished makes the layers kind of come together in 3d yeah it does it adds a lot of depth to it so you can see where i've done it here and around this guy and have not done it over here so we can do some under this here and just pull it out and if you have it transparent enough it'll just kind of blend in without too much fuss you don't have to worry about your brush strokes and you know with this one especially we're we're kind of already you know taking liberties with our brush strokes so I can just kind of go in here and make some deliberate marks with our glaze and now I've got a nice glow of pink around my shell there maybe put a little bit of it on this side of this guy and then I can go on the shell itself and so like maybe down here I want, maybe let's use the ultramarine blue with this magenta. We'll do a little bit of a purple shadow on the bottom of this whole shell here. And it's gonna round it out really nicely for me right there. I can put it a little bit on the sand if I want. Some of those shells want some shadowing on some of these areas here around this one. This is that blue. So thinking about where the light's hitting it, maybe the light's pulling some shadows underneath some areas or where some of this is overlapping. Maybe on my sand over here I've got some. splatter a little bit. I do want to pull out a little bit more form on this guy right there so I'm just gonna kind of dab in some lighter color right there to pull that forward slightly. Maybe a little bit of red. There we go. Okay. I like it. It's really fun. Um, I kind of think his arm looks a little like flat to me. So I might try to give him a little bit more amount of white again. A little bit more 
movement here, just a little bit more of a round that out a little bit and bring that arm up just slightly right there. I need a little bit of white. It's not showing up. That happens when your background and your and your object are the same value. So if I was to turn that black and white, you wouldn't be able to see where that arm is at all, probably. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of white right there and just gonna bring, curve that up and then back down a little bit right there. I'll just give it, make it look not so straight, straight. I feel like I kind of got him a little bit straight everywhere. So do the same thing here, just kind of curve him out a little bit. So he's more organic shaped instead of just being stiff. Here we go. as it comes in and then it thickens out just a little bit and narrows again. All right, that's better. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of this white now. After you glaze, sometimes you lose your highlights so you can go back in and add some of those in if you need to. Okay, so I'm going to splatter, I think, with white. Do kind of an off-white. It'll pick up some of these other colors. And when you use a fan brush or a toothbrush, some, I like to use a stiff bristle brush. It feels like it. And can kind of control the splattering a little bit easier. Um, just add a lot of water and then you should be able to just tap in it. It'll come off the brush. The more water you use, the bigger the splatters will be. So, but the more transparent also. So, oh yeah, that looks good. Almost like a sea spray. You can cover up some of your shell if you don't want it. Splatters. It's not bothering me to get the splatters on my shells, but if you want them to be a little bit cleaner, you can cover them with paper towel or something before you do this. Or you can also wipe off any splatters that get places where you don't want them. You know, and just make sure your background is dry before you do it. And then I think I'm going to do one more set, set of splatters with maybe a darker color that'll show up. So maybe let's get this kind of ultramarine blue, thalo blue combo. Maybe a little bit of that cobalt teal. So it's kind of a light medium blue. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's good. Again, just much or as little as you want. You could do this as many colors as you want. Of course, I think, you know, you can't overdo, so edit accordingly. <laughs> All right. There we go. Beautiful. There's our Impressionist style sea creatures. I'm going to, I think I'm going to sign it in white. Here, I'm going to use my Posca paint pen for that. Or no, yep, Posca Uni. And you kind of have to start it on a paper towel there until the ink starts. You need to shake it.
make it a little bit more it's transparent you can tell that it's not mixed well enough if it's kind of comes out and it looks watery so there we go now it looks white okay I'm gonna sign it down here you can use a brush for this too if you want but there we go done you can also use one of the pens if you've got any of these paint pens you could kind of touch up little things with it you know with that or you can use your we did mixed media uh, a few weeks ago so this would be a perfect project to pull out your pencils do extra you know little uh, details with your pens um, so that's just up to you you know how creative or you want to get with it but I think that um, it definitely is one that can be um, explored with you know especially this style you can kind of pull out your other mixed media things and I'm kind of going back over some of the outline of that Man, starfish I, there but. I can see this hanging in the bathroom now <laughs> yeah, Mark always uses me that I, don't, I, I can only put the that's the only place seashells and all that stuff was being put back in the early 2000s. <laughs> I had a little bit of blue there. I realized I hadn't really added any blue there to that. Okay, there we go. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with another tutorial. If you do this one, you can share it with me. I've got links down in the description to all my social media um, spots so you can share it. I'd love to see your version of it. And um, we will be back next week. We're going to be doing a, um, a um, forest kind of scene. So oh, I think nice. it'll be fun. I'll be doing some light and forest. And, and then after that, um, can't remember what we're doing after that. I don't know. The, you can go to the um, community tab on my channel. If you go to my homepage on my channel, um, the community tab, it shows you the schedule for the month so you can see what's coming up because I obviously need it. And I don't know what I'm painting. <laughs> I do one week at a time. I know what I'm painting the next week, and that's about as good as it gets. <laughs> But we're going to be working on um, a new bonus video this um, Saturday. So if you're part of our Ooh. Patreon crew, you can join us for that. Um, it's the $5 level, uh, 5 to 10, you know, whatever. And then the $10 level, we're almost done with this one. I'll show you really quick. So if you want to pop up that Patreon link there for them. I don't know if you already have, but. Oh, I did, yeah. Okay. There it is. So there it is, patreon.com slash angelafineart. If you go to my website, too, um, thankfulart.com, it also had link, has links to the Patreon um, thing, but uh, we added our little kitty cashmere, cashmere last week <laughs> and some birds, bird feeders. So, we're gonna add flowers down here this week and we'll be done with this project and be starting on a new one next week. So, um, those that ten dollar level, um, is that painting there that I just showed you, and they um, we work on a project all month long, um, and uh, until it's done. So, it, it you know, sometimes that one was, I think this will be our six weeks working on, working on it. So, right. you know, they, they, some of them take longer than others. So. And to those, you know, who may be first time watchers, you get access not only to this month's, but also all the previous ones. Right. Too, yeah. So. so if you go on my website there, thankfulart.com and check that out, you can see all the different um, previous videos that we've done uh, for that level. Mm -hmm. So... All right. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.